center and the fever are headed back to the playoffs. It's been a couple of rough years, but the addition of, of course, Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston, it's all worked out. Nafisa Collier also playing great. Clark pulling up for the deep three. She's coming off a triple-double. As I mentioned, Indiana's back in the playoffs, but she said, we're not happy to be there. We can do some damage, as did Clark. 17 in the first half, Fever by five at the break. Rebecca Lobo is going to be here in a second to talk about both Collier and Clark. And Clark getting some MVP consideration. Bucci's going to have the erstwhile MVP coming up here in a second. We talked about how great Collier is. Possible first-round playoff matchup. Well, to see, Indiana's vacillating between that six and seven spot. Collier at 23 through three. A big quarter three for Minnesota. They're up a dozen after three in the fourth. Clark catch and shoot. It's a three-point game. Getting the crowd fired up. A couple minutes later, Kelsey Mitchell. There's a couple of good Kelseys in this league for sure. Fever cut it to one. Tyrese Halliburton in the house. Hey, got a pacer watching the Fever. This place can be lit up. Bridget Carlton puts the links back up for Courtney Williams. You bet. Dagger. Double digit road win despite Clark's 25. Sun and Aces. Asia Wilson, the likely MVP. Late in the first quarter. Sun lead by five. Marina Mabry doesn't start, but she did play 29 minutes. She led the Sun in field goal attempts, 15, 6 of 15. She was 5 of 10 from 2, where that one was. Sun by 7. Carrington puts them up by 9. And later in the quarter, it would go to 14. Aisha Harris. They were just 3 of 16 shooting threes. So that was a rare make from the Sun. That enabled the Aces to peck away at the lead. Kate Kelsey Plum had an outstanding game. Play 34 minutes in this one. Wilson down low with the right hand. I'd give my left arm to be ambidextrous. She had 20 points and eight rebounds. So now the Aces suddenly, at one point, down by 14, lead by one. We mentioned Plum's game. Eight of 15 from the floor, three of eight from three. 27 points for Plum. Wilson looks so good from that range. So, so. Silky smooth every time. And this was the dagger. Squish. Chelsea Gray rocking the suburbs just like the Greg Kinban did. And the Aces, great comeback. They win by five. She's listed as 6'4. I'm listed as 6'4. We both claim to be taller. Someday America will find out. It's Rebecca Lobo. Great to see you, Rebecca. Let's talk about the Aces. Man, what a gutty, gritty kind of win for them. Really a great watch at the end of the game against the Sun. You know, they're stuck in the four seed, the highest scoring team in the league. What about the Aces as they go for their three-peat entering the playoffs? Where do you see them? Yeah, it was a great watch at the end of the game. It was a, a little bit of a struggle throughout the first three quarters in particular. I mean, this is a Vegas team that has won four in a row, five of six, and they're really coming together in particular on the defensive end of the floor. In the first half tonight, they had a season low 26 points, but their defense kept them in it. They forced Connecticut into 19 turnovers. And then to me, their champion, championship experience really shone through in the last minute. Asia Wilson with a huge bucket from the free throw line area. Chelsea Gray with a huge three as well. So this is a team that is simply dangerous. They're finding some rhythm. They're putting it together on the defensive end. And then when they get everything rolling offensively, uh, certainly a team, even though they're not in the top couple in the standings, certainly a team that can win a championship again. Yeah, the four seed right now in the W and about five or six games left in the regular season, depending on what team you are. And right now that 2-7 matchup, Minnesota and Indiana, that's a possibility. Again, there's a, there's a chance that could change but what about that first round matchup how would that look and, and what's your sense about that one these are two teams that are simply really fun to watch play. They share the ball really well. Minnesota's leading the league in assists per game. Indiana is fifth. They shoot the basketball really well. Indiana uh, or Minnesota leading the league in three-point field goal percentage. Indiana is third. And then you have a couple of players who should each be first-team all WNBA performers. Nafisa Collier for the Minnesota Lynx is just having a monster year. T tonight she had 26 points, 10 rebounds. I would expect her to finish second in the MVP vote. 
voting. And then, of course, Caitlin Clark, one of the most exciting players to watch in all of women's basketball, including in the WNBA this season. She was close to another triple-double tonight. I would expect her to finish even third or fourth in the MVP voting this year. So just two teams share the ball, score the ball, play at a high pace. They're just really aesthetically pleasing to watch. This would be an incredibly fun matchup to watch if it ends up being that in the first round. Yeah, Minnesota, much better defensive team. Of all the teams qualify for the playoffs, Indiana has given up the most points per game. All right, get your tape measurement out. Someday we will find out who is taller, Rebecca or Bucci. <laughs> Can't wait. Eagle. It's simple. Asia Wilson arriving to this one in a plain white tee. For those following, the Aces are 4-2 and two when Wilson rocks the classic white shirt. And Wilson is averaging over 30 points per game during that span. Aces looking to win their fourth straight game. Early in the second quarter, Chelsea Gray drives to the paint, kicks it out, swings to Kelsey Plum. Plum gets Dewana Bonner on the shot fake, buries the triple as the shot clock expires. Next possession, still down seven. Jack Young misses the jumper. Outlet to Marina Mabry, who throws the full court pass to Dijanae Carrington for the lay-in. Son of 12 at the half. What a dime by Mabry. Early in the third quarter, Aces now down seven. Gray to Wilson. Working the post. Spins off Alyssa Thomas for the bucket down low. Aces down five. Final seconds of the third. Wilson sets the screen. Plum drives and connects on the elbow jumper. Aces down three through three. Now early in the fourth. Dewana Bonner gets the steal, goes coast to coast for the layup. The Sun are up seven. Now, under four minutes left in the fourth, Aces down four. Gray swings it to Plum on the wing. She knocks down the three. Aces down one. Plum finished the game high, 27 points. Now, a minute left in the third. Gray in the corner hits Wilson for the jumper at the stripe. Aces up one. And then the 30 seconds left in the fourth. Aces still up one. Plum driving. Dishes it to Gray, buries the three, aces up four. Gray fired up, finished with 13 points. Now the final seconds of the game, Sun down four. Mabry misses the layup. Wilson gets the board but appears to get injured. Wilson immediately limps off the court after being fouled on the rebound. Appears to have suffered a lower body injury. Should stay in the game to shoot free throws as the aces complete the comeback and win it. 72 67. Wilson just 10 points away from WNBA single season scoring record as the Aces get their fourth straight win. The Lynx are red hot, having won eight of their last nine games. But Caitlin Clark and the Fever coming in on a five game win streak with Clark posting her second triple double of the season. We start this one three and a half left in the first quarter. Fever up one. Caitlin Clark drives. Pulls up, takes the deep two, and sinks it. The Fever up three. Clark with seven points and three rebounds in the first quarter. Now, early second quarter, Fever up three. Clark crosses half court, takes a 30-foot jumper, sinks it. Fever up six. Clark heating up. Late in the second quarter now, Fever up seven. Kelsey Mitchell passes to Clark. She pulls another three, and that's good. Fever up 10. Clark up to 17 points on the night. Now the next Lynx possession, Lynx down 10. Nafisa Collier in the post. Takes a turnaround jumper. Got him. Lynx are down eight. Collier trying to keep the Lynx in it with 14 points going into the half. Now early in the third quarter, Lynx down five. Minnesota moving the ball to the open. Alana Smith, she takes the three. It's good. Lynx now down two. Middle of the third quarter, Courtney Williams passes to Collier at the top of the key. Takes the three all alone, and boom goes the dynamite. Lynx are up four. Collier finished with a team high 26 points. Now, middle of fourth quarter, Aaliyah Boston passing to Caitlin Clark. She takes the three. It goes down. The Fever cut it to three. Clark finished with 25 points, eight rebounds, eight assists, but it wasn't enough to hold off the Lynx. Just over two minutes left in the fourth. Bridget Carlton grabs a rebound, passes to Williams. She takes the three. That goes down. The Lynx up eight. A minute later, Smith passes to Carlton. She takes the three. Another one good. Lynx up 11. They'd go on to win this one 99 88th, Minnesota's ninth win in the last 10 games and back-to-back -back wins against the Fever for the first time since 2021. Well, the Wings are coming off back-to-back -back losses after winning three straight, while the Dream enter Friday tied with the Sky for the final playoff spot. Start this one late in the first quarter. With the Wings up two. Arike Gumbawale passes out of a double team. Natasha Howard drives to the basket, puts up the layup. It goes down. Wings up four. Early in the second quarter, J.C. Sheldon passes to Howard down low. 
puts the hook shot up for their first double digit lead and the wings are up 10. Howard with 14 points in the half. Now three minutes later, Tierra McCowan passes to Agumba Wale. She drives it, takes the deep two through contact. It goes down and one. Wings up 11 after the made free throw. Wings lead 56-42 heading into the half. Fourth quarter, Dream not giving up just yet, though. Just over three minutes left in the fourth, Jordan Canada passes to Ryan Howard. She takes the three and sinks it to tie the game at 85. Dream trailed by as much as 16 in the game. A minute later, Howard gets the pass on the wing, drives the basket, puts up the layup. It goes down tied at 87. Howard up to 30 on the night. Staying tied, we head to overtime. First minute of OT, Dream up to Jordan Canada. Passes to Alicia Gray. She takes a three from the wing. It goes down. Dreamer up five. Just over a minute later, Howard dribbles to the top of the arc. Takes a step back three. Got him. Season high, 33 points for Howard. The Dreamer up six. They would go on to win it 